Yeah, they don't like each other. In the birding world, winter provides a unique opportunity to see species that only show up when the weather gets cold. These birds are often habitat specific and require certain types of food or terrain to thrive. I went to the frigid shores of Lake Michigan to see an interesting bird species that in the United States can only be found along the Atlantic coast and the Great Lakes. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding, and today I am back at the Milwaukee lakefront looking for purple sandpipers. While shorebirds are typically thought of as warm weather species, the purple sandpiper is a bit different. As the sandpiper with the most northern range, this bird is accustomed to cold waters and can be found on rocky shorelines in winter. I saw my life for purple sandpiper on the first of the year, but since they are a rare visitor to the Midwest, I was determined to get some good looks at the two that had been spending time in Milwaukee. I actually saw one of these purple sandpipers on the first of the year, but we were in kind of a hurry, so I didn't get to stay that long and look at it. But they're one of the coolest birds that comes in winter, and you can really only find them along the Great Lakes if you're in the Midwest. So it could be tough because it sounds like they've been kind of all over the place. Some days they're not seen at all. Some days there's two seen. So let's get to work and see if we can pick out one of these incredibly unusual shorebirds. With eBird reports indicating that the purple sandpipers had been changing locations along the coast, I started out looking near the boat launch. Much of the water in the marina was frozen, and waves crashing over the rocks caused ice to build up along the break walls, making walking somewhat hazardous. On the other side of the break wall, there was rough open water. Here, I spotted mallards and buffleheads. I noticed a few birders looking at something in the corner of the break walls and made my way over. The first bird I saw in this area was the ruddy turnstone that had been living along the lake ever since fall. But just beyond the turnstone was my first glimpse of the bird I was hoping to see, the purple sandpiper. Not only was there one of these rare birds, but two of them feeding separately on the algae and ice covered rocks. With freezing hands and no good plan to view the birds that were positioned below the boulders, I watched for a while before making my way back to the car to regroup. Well, it is seriously windy out. The wind is whipping all over the place. The waves are huge, but there's two purple sandpipers here and one ruddy turnstone. Here's the situation. There is ice covering the entire break wall, and that's where you kind of have to be to see these purple sandpipers. They're actually right by the parking lot. And they're eating whatever they can find in the seaweed that's there and some of the algae that's kind of washed up on these rocks. They're hopping around. They're actually chasing each other, so they're not really playing nice when they're foraging. Uh, they're very fun to watch, but the wind is brutal, and that ice is making it so hard to stand on that break wall. But it's a really cool vibe here with these purple sandpipers, a species that we probably get somewhat often, but nobody's able to really walk out on break walls and check all those rocks where they'll normally be. But a species that is here in winter that uh, comes into the Great Lakes area and is usually on the east coast, but this is a very neat experience to be able to see them. Hopefully I can get some good looks at them for you. After warming up a bit, I returned to the break wall and climbed up on the precariously slick concrete to get a better vantage point. It didn't take long before one of the sandpipers wandered into view. The purple sandpiper is a stout shorebird with orangey-yellow legs and a long, slightly curved orangey-yellow bill. In breeding plumage, this species is mottled, with copper coloring on their back and wings. In non-breeding plumage, which is when purple sandpipers are most likely to be seen, they have gray on their head, neck, and wings, along with a white underside. This species gets its name from the slight purple sheen that sometimes shows on its wing feathers. Purple sandpipers also have white near their eye, along with a small darker colored patch between their eye and bill. This bird summers in the Arctic, spending much of its time in northern Canada, Greenland, and Iceland. In winter, they travel south to northern Europe, the northeastern United States, and the Great Lakes making the purple sandpiper the farthest north wintering shorebird. 
these plump sandpipers prefer areas with rocky shores and have no qualms about residing in places that get pounded with surf. Purple sandpipers feed on a variety of aquatic invertebrates, including mussels, worms, crabs, and more. In terms of habitat, these two purple sandpipers had found the perfect location. With large boulders, a persistent supply of waves, and plenty of algae to sift through, they seemed right at home and actively fed almost the entire time I was there. As I watched, other birders made appearances as well, including Tim, who was also excited to see these birds. Well, this is pretty awesome. I couldn't ask for a better experience with these purple sandpipers. Uh, pretty close looks at them, crazy waves happening. They don't seem to mind at all, but I'm pretty satisfied and I'm going to head out. I headed back to the car feeling incredibly good with the time I got to spend watching these rare winter visitors. That was absolutely insane. The purple sandpipers were just doing their thing and feeding and they came really close on the rocks. They were chasing each other around. Uh, a couple other birders including Tim came and got looks at them and it was just good all the way around. Before leaving, I noticed something across the marina that caught my attention. As I was leaving the purple sandpiper spot, I saw a nice flock of gulls out in the distance. So I'm going to take a look at those real quick. As I made my way over to the gull flock, I noticed some other species along the way, including American crows, European starlings, and greater scop. When I was out near the gulls, I immediately noticed one with a darker mantle, which turned out to be a great blackback gull. Other than that, the rest were herring. As is customary when I visit Milwaukee, I took a moment to enjoy the sights along the lake before leaving. Was able to get a great blackback gull out of that group, so that's pretty cool. But I am freezing, got the whole Wisconsin winter on the lake experience today, and uh, very pleased with how everything went. Pleased to see the purple sandpiper, happy to get a great blackback gull, and to call it a day. There is something fascinating about the species that venture down from the north in winter. Whether it's the general apathy toward the cold, the specific range they are found in, or unique habitats they call home, birds like the purple sandpiper are some of my favorites to search for. Hopefully these birds will continue to thrive along the shores of the Great Lakes for the duration of the season, and maybe even return next year. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah, they don't like each other.